I'm Lauren with Pack Hacker, and today we're going to be taking a detailed look at the Freitag F306 Hazard Backpack, which I've been testing for the last two weeks. Let's dive in. So the materials on this bag are actually what make it so unique. They're actually made entirely with used truck tarps. So what the brand does is they go and they look for um, they go and look for trucks that are, you know, disposing of their tarpaulin from the outside of the trucks themselves, and they make they wash that material. They um, or they, they get the material, they wash it, they make sure it's all good, they test it for chemicals and just make sure that it's all like good to be used. Um, and then they clean it up and use that to create these bags. So it is a form of upcycling. And what's nice about that is that it kind of has this natural patina. You can see it's a little bit hard because it is white, but you can see that there's like a little bit of blemishing on the sides there. In addition to, you know, the front just has like scratches here and there. I mean, even on the bottom, you can see there's all of these little cuts and some of them are from me just setting it down so often and some it just came with. So in general, this is a great bag if you like that really worn in look. Um, it comes very naturally with it because the truck tarp is what the truck tarp is. And so what's nice about that is that it kind of has a, um, it keeps the structure really nicely, but over the course of testing, it really hasn't broken in a ton to the point where, you know, it starts to lose that shape. In general, it stays very square. One thing I will say is that, you know, if I have it on and there's not a ton happening up here, it does start to sometimes cave in. Um, right now it's padded out pretty well with what I have on the inside, but you can even see it down here, it starts to buckle a little bit. And right now it is just kind of sitting on the table. You know, if I have it pulled up and if, you know, stuff is really bottom loaded, it did keep that shape pretty pretty well, but I really did enjoy this. I think it has a really unique look to it. Um, and depending on what kind of bag you get, you're gonna get all sorts of different patterns based off of what's available. So it is really based off what's available since it is all recycled, um, but that's you know a little bit of uniqueness that it, it brings to the table in terms of a style. So the inside liner is made with a polyester with PVC coating. Um, so I'll you know show you that when we get on the inside there, but overall pretty simple. Um, Oh, sorry, this, is, this on the outside is the polyester with the PVC coating and then the liner is the recycled PET bottles. So kind of the, the reverse there. Um, and that, that polyester with the, the coating is what is that truck tarp material. So um, taking a look at the sort of features on the outside here, we have a carry handle on the side. Um, what this is, is it kind of gives it that functionality of being like a briefcase style carry if you want it to be. Um, I didn't find myself using that a ton, but it's nice to be able to have another place to grip it other than the top carry handle up here. This carry handle, because it's set so far back, it makes it really easy to hang. So, you know, if I were to step back and I were to hold it, it feels like a more balanced carry and it just sort of you know, it, it allows me to hang it up. Like if I were to put this on like the back of a bathroom stall, it sits directly up against the stall versus if it were hanging in the center, there'd be like a little bit of, you know, movement or angling. So it does create a sort of more straight and narrow um, handling depending on where you're gonna like grab onto it. But in general, I found myself mostly using the backpack straps anyway um, and not really carrying it much. So it is fairly heavy, I will say um, with that, this truck tarp material is 2.87 pounds, which is like 1.3 kilograms. So in general, you know, if you're looking for something like weight, lightweight, this isn't necessarily it. But if you're looking for something durable, this is really great for that. One uh, thing on the durability note uh, that I will mention is that these zippers and the hardware themselves are unbranded. So we're generally a little bit suspicious of unbranded hardware. I haven't had any issues. Um, they all run really smoothly, both in the main compartment and in this front compartment here. But one thing I will say is that it, it's very jangly. So just like, if you were to just shake it, you know, obviously it's gonna make a lot of noise, but it made that much noise when I was just walking around. And so that's something that, um, it's kind of like a, I don't know if it's a more so a personal thing, but it also kind of threw me off that it was only on one side. So, you know, when this is on your body, this is going to be hanging out on all of these 
zippers are only on this side of the pack and I can show you why in a second but essentially what that does is it makes it like jangle only in one ear and so it felt very like off-putting like I felt a little bit off balance and I think that's me more so being nitpicky but if jangly zippers are something that bother you and those zipper poles kind of banging together then that's something to keep an eye out for. So the reason why it actually only can be on the side is because of this little piece of fabric here. So this main compartment zips has two zippers but this zipper on this side can only go as far as this little piece of material. So there's no way for you to open up the bag any more than, you know, you can open it as much as you want on this side, but you can't open it from this side really. Um, because what it does is it just kind of locks in where you have to keep the zippers. And it's not like you can put the zippers all the way down here if you want to kind of put them a little bit lower on your body. They do have to always stay up in this zone here otherwise you're going to end up with a completely open zipper so it's kind of an interesting design choice i didn't find it got in the way a ton but i did find that sometimes i wish i could have just unzipped it from somewhere else i think there's you know times where it's a little bit more convenient if you know it makes sense because the carry handles on this side but that doesn't mean that i'm always setting the bag down on that side sometimes i just kind of like throw it down and I want to, you know, maybe it's on this side and I want to be able to grab the zippers from there. So in general, it's, it's kind of something that's just like more nitpicky um, and something that you just get used to being able to just like make sure that whenever you set it down, it's on the side and then you have the zippers from here. Um, the one other thing I will say is that it does kind of make it harder to just quickly unzip the bag to get into the middle. So you can unzip here and you have access to that main compartment but sometimes I don't want this much of a gap and I would rather have like maybe this much space to just like slip my hand in to avoid any gear falling out. Um, especially because once this starts to unzip, then you're getting into like corner territory. And so you're gonna be unzipping more of that bag. So almost like if this had been maybe a little bit further down, it would have been a little bit better. But again, like I said, in general, more of like a nitpicky thing I would say than anything. So then looking at the back panel here, we have a nice mesh cushioned back panel. It adds a decent amount of cushion for you, um, but I would say the one thing that I felt the most is these backpack straps. They don't have any sort of cushion in them. I mean, you can see it's like a seat. It's essentially just like the recycled seatbelt material. And so what that is, is it kind of puts a lot of pressure right in this area when you have it on your shoulders. So I can throw the bag on right now for you. And you can see when I put it on, it has like a really cool sleek look to it. But the more you start to load out this pack, I have it pretty light right now, despite being pretty full, but I packed like a full weekend of gear in here. And if I had been carrying that around for a long period of time, I would have been uncomfortable. I mean, I was just doing like short stints of walking. And even then I was like, oh, I don't love this. So I think right here mostly is where that like pain point and that pressure point is and primarily because there is no additional padding or anything like that and since the bag is heavier to start with you're kind of starting off on like a, a disadvantage I guess you could say um, so that was one of the other qualms that I had with this was um, the the quality of those straps or I guess the comfort of them rather one thing I did really like though is these strap keepers so you can see they're all bundled up here but essentially what they are is they unravel this way and then if you want you can just keep them here just so they're easy and quick to adjust. You can do like that. Like nice and easy, it's very smooth. And then say, you know, I found the fit that worked out well for me regardless of whether I was wearing a jacket or not. And so I found this fit, I kept that fit. And so what you do is you can unloop these, roll them up just a little bit here and then hook it to, I'm gonna roll it one more time. And then you like hook it to, well, I guess maybe not, this little bit there. So it keeps it out of the way and it keeps it from dangling, but you still have a good amount of strap adjustment to work with. So um, even within this, you know, I have that extra space. If I wanted to dial it in a little bit more, I could, uh, but then you end up with like a little bit of a loop. So not the best, um, you know, once you have this locked in, I would say it's more annoying to 
kind of fuss with it. So I kind of, when I did this, just sort of set it and forget it. Um, another thing that I will mention is that sometimes I felt like the buckles were just slipping a little bit. So I would find myself over the course of a couple of days, like maybe once or twice, just giving it one more quick adjustment. Um, not a huge deal, but I do obviously prefer if I find a fit that I like to be able to just leave it in there. Um, but it just kind of felt like just very gradually it would start to slip a little bit. So we'll get into the main compartment here. Um, when it's flipped on this side, you have access to this front pocket, which has two internal pockets that have a little bit of extra padding on them. And then it's essentially just a dump pocket. So if you're looking at the bag like this, it is just a nice vertical pocket. But if you flip the bag over to your front and you want to carry it, you know, if you want to bring it over to your front to get into this pocket, these pockets are oriented so that they um, are facing up towards you and everything slips in. So on this one side here, I have a passport and a phone. And then on the other side, I don't currently have anything on the other side. Here's where I usually put like headphones or things like that. Um, but the one thing that I kind of want to point out is that I felt like these pockets were a little bit awkward. So like I wish that this here fit a passport or a phone but it doesn't really fit either of those things. And it does fit like a, if you have a magic mouse for Apple, it does fit that, but I like to keep all of my tech stuff together. So I have that on the inside of the main compartment. So this pocket here, I just sort of like started throwing stuff in there I found. Um, and then the other pocket was a little bit bigger than I really needed. So I have in here, like I mentioned my passport and my phone. Um, and then a wallet fits really nicely in there. But if you have other uh, Freytag accessories, then those fit really nicely in there. Um, but I mean, I have a fairly bulky wallet and that fits pretty great in that pocket. And then there is additionally a key leash. So the key leash has a lot of great length. You can definitely get this into your door without having to remove it, which is good because this is only the loop that's included. This is an additional, or an additional carabiner that I've added on. And so if you, you know, wanted to get your keys off of here, you would have to detach them fully. So for me, you know, unhooking it like that and then hooking it back up. But if you were to loop it through this loop, your keys and just kind of feed it through, then that's something where you would have to detach it every single time that you need to get access to your keys. So going into the main compartment here, we'll start with this first little bucket. I'm just gonna put this stuff off to the side. So we'll start with this main compartment. This unzips in essentially a clamshell. So in here, I just have a few packing cubes. Um, I was able to fit you know, a full weekend's worth of gear plus room to spare, depending on how um, light or heavy you decide to pack. And then the rest of this is um, you know, just your back panel for accessing all of your tech stuff. On the top here is a zippered pocket. I, like I mentioned, this is where I just kind of dumped all my tech stuff, headphones or um, my, you know, pair of, a little bit of chapstick or something like that, that I just didn't want to get lost in here just because that organization was a little bit iffy for me. And then in this main compartment, it's a pretty structured bucket shape, so it's nice and easy to pack. And I found it was a great fit for just like a water bottle slotted off to one side. It felt like it fit in there very nicely right at the right at the base there. It just like slots in very nice and it rests very simple. I think this one I liked a lot because it was so satisfying to pack whenever I loaded it up with a ton of gear. Everything felt like it just kind of fit in there. Part of that is because of that square shape. Square shapes are a lot easier to pack if you kind of coordinate all of it. It fits a little bit more like Tetris than something that's rounded. And so that makes it nice and easy to pack. Um, you can see some of the texture from the recycled bag here. So it's like on the side there, some taped seams and things like that. And then I have my keyboard. And here is where a little, there's a little slot for a pen. So I did have some issues. It came out very easily then, but there have been times where I struggled. I felt like a lot of the times this little loop would get caught on the rubberized part of the pen. And so sometimes when I'd be taking it out, it put up a little bit of a fight, but in general, um, 
you know, just kind of hit or miss with that. If you don't have a super rubberized one or like a smaller pen or something like that, it's just a nice and easy place to put a pen, um, which is kind of a nice little addition uh, at, a, at a detail. And then this front pocket here, you can see this whole panel is a different color, which gives you an indication of its size. And this fits a iPad. So you can see I struggled to get it out a little bit and I do struggle to get it in a little bit. So it does fit this device. I believe it's a 10 and a 10.9 or 10 and a half inch device. Um, and so this is the iPad Air. And so like when you're slotting it in, I find that it sort of butts in with these top walls a little bit just because I don't have a ton of extra wiggle room to work with. So if you do have like a mini or something a little bit smaller, then you, you'll have a little extra space to work with. But in general, you know, if I'm pulling it out, it's like I need like, it's almost like I need like two more inches of clearance to be able to make it a little bit smoother, but it does fit in there pretty nicely. Or you can use this, I use this for tech sometimes too, if I wanted to put a couple extra charging cables in there, if I didn't have, you know, an iPad or something like that. And then back here is the laptop sleeve, kind of the same thing. It starts to kind of butt up against the side wall once I'm removing it. And so that goes there. And then one other thing to note about this laptop compartment is that it is technically a false bottom. So you can see this is the compartment. It has a little extra cushion, a little bit of extra material there. And then that is the actual bottom of the backpack. But the problem with this is that there's almost there's just barely too much material at the end of the false bottom. So when you stick the laptop in, it goes all the way to the end. And then it's kind of hard to see because this doesn't unzip fully, but this is the laptop. This is the bottom of the bag. And when the laptop is fully in there, it goes right up against the bottom of the bag. So I wonder if you might be able to hear it. It's like if I set it down, this, my laptop is resting at the bottom of the bag. So it doesn't really actually serve the purpose of a false bottom. The false bottom is designed so that when you set your backpack down, your tech that is in the back doesn't actually make contact with like the floor of the bag or whatever floor surface you're setting it on. And so when I would set down my laptop, sure it was in here and it was protected and there's still a little bit of added cushion, but I would set it down and I could still hear my laptop hitting the floor. So it didn't really have a ton of function in that sense, um, which is interesting considering, you know, that's very intentional design. And then if closing this up, see so it zip all the way on one side. If you have the backpack sitting up like this, you can get quick access to the back here and get your laptop in and out. So that's how I mostly did it. It removed that issue of bumping into this top material here. And so same deal with the iPad. If you're grabbing it from here, you're not gonna bump into the top. Um, but I didn't always do that, especially if I was loading everything into my backpack when it was in that clamshell mode. And so I also found that sometimes I would open up my lap or open up this bag, grab my laptop out, and then just start grabbing all of my other items from this pocket too. So it kind of acts as like a dual purpose. It's like a quick grab pocket, but this serves essentially the same function and you do have that extra space. So, you know, a few different access points there, but in general, those two, two top pockets there do function um, sort of as the same thing to be able to just get access to that main compartment. So that laptop sleeve can hold up to a 17 inch device. So you do have a little bit of room to work with. I have a 13 inch here. You can barely even see it when I slipped it in there. So there is extra room to work with. Um, the biggest thing was just that addition of the false bottom and how it didn't necessarily add anything um, in terms of protection. So uh, uh, with the, 20, the 19 liter capacity on this bag, you know, there's a fair amount of space to work with. Like I said, it's, um, you know, I found that I was able to pack for a full weekend and still have a little room to spare, or I could pack it out a ton and it did have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, the material is fairly stiff and it does actually have a little bit of a scent to it. So it feels, or it smells like rubbery almost. And it was really strong when I first started testing the bag, but over the course of the two weeks, it's faded a ton. I can barely even smell it anymore. Um, it faded sooner than two weeks, so you don't even have to wait that long. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. If you're sensitive to smells, it might take a little bit uh, of time to get used to it, though it has gone away from me. So eventually, you know, it'll get to a point where I can't even smell it at all. So there you have it, the Frytog Hazard Backpack. Thanks for keeping it here at Packhacker, your guide to smarter travel, and we'll see you in the next one.